All right, how's everyone doing? I'm Rich Chalenza. Thanks for tuning in to the Rich Chalenza Show. WTF are you talking about? So what I want to call this podcast today is train your brain to have less stress and be more fit. So I was just doing a podcast earlier on working out and how to prevent injuries. Because if you plan on working out for long periods of time uh, in your life and having some longevity, you really have to be aware that you don't get injured, especially your legs. Hold on one sec. I'm going to get some water here. But so if you get a chance, you might want to check that out. And this, in this whole, uh, how would I say this? This week, I've been doing a lot of self-awareness podcasts, talking with other people, doing different things. And... I talk again about in another podcast about how we're not really aware that we're not that self-aware. <laughs> and that's really kind of, it's pretty close to what I titled it. And when it comes to stress and fitness, a lot of times I don't think we're that aware of what we're putting ourselves under as far as, especially stress, how it's a killer. Everyone kind of knows that. But also in fitness, they have to be aware of what they're doing and making sure it's working for them and they're not in a rut. Or if they haven't started working out, really try to start doing something physical. And I think if you can balance both of these things out, it's huge. And, and let me just first start with stress. I think no matter who we are, we all have different amounts of stress. No one has the same amount. We're all different people, live different lives. We also were programmed differently, so we look at things differently as far as stress goes. Somebody may um, have a lot of bills every month, like I don't know how much, and be like, yeah, that's no problem for me. I'll make that at the end of the month, and they usually do. Sometimes they may not. They work through it, no problem. Sleep at night, no problem. Other people can have very little um, you know, expenses and still be stressed out of their mind. They just may be a worry wart, scared about everything, right? They just have that. I don't want to say it's a gene, but they have where they're always stressed. Anything can stress them out. Their gym shoes could be out of place you know, at the front door, hypothetically. Or somebody doesn't put the dishes away in the dishwasher. Or someone didn't throw out the garbage. Whatever the case may be, that may stress them out. So I, I do think there's different things, not even always financially, that stress people out. Obviously, there's all these different things. But if you can just learn to control your behavior when dealing with stress... I, I think your life's going to change because I was kind of that person. I was very hot and cold. My uncle used to say about me when I was younger, even when things were going really bad uh, or we would be doing some stuff illegal or you know whatever, collecting money or gambling, and I just I, he said, Rich walks around like there's nothing ever wrong. I think that was more of a show because no matter, and, and that would be, a persona, I guess, is what I was very stressed at times and very aggravated internally. But around my uncles and maybe my cousins and friends, I didn't show it. I wanted to be kind of the cool guy, trying or whatever. Like this shit doesn't bother me. Oh, this happened. Who gives a shit? Like I was kind of almost above everything. Internally, I want. I was ready to scream, right? And before you know it, you know, I personally, you know, you get married and you start taking on all these other things because. I think I felt insecure that if I didn't have all these possessions, homes, cars, lifestyle, I started putting a lot of stress on myself. If I didn't get these things, that I was unworthy. I wouldn't be a good husband or a good father, whatever those things may be. Again, stressing myself out. Why? I have no idea. Which I think no matter what, took a toll on my marriage, took a toll on my kids. And then I started to make films, movies. And because I wasn't making, uh, there was always a problem with me, I realized. Because I, I needed stress. But to a certain degree, here's the weird thing about stress I look at too. Some people need stress to motivate themselves. Because if if they don't have stress to a certain degree, they're not challenging themselves in all this. But I do think there's a way to challenge yourself and be self-aware to say, I don't have to stress myself out in the process. And like, so for instance, if you're a filmmaker, a lot of times I get if somebody gives you $30 million and says you only have 30 days to shoot this film, you're under the stress of completing it, Right. I get that, and that's a different thing, but that's, you have an opportunity to make a movie, blah, 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 they're giving you a lot of money. If you can't do it, say you can't do it. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people that, you know, buy homes they can't afford, buy cars they can't afford, live certain lifestyles. They keep putting themselves under all this stress. Why? Again, 
don't know if it's keeping up with the Joneses, whatever our issue is, we feel, I think sometimes, um, empty if we don't have certain things in our life. Growing up, I don't know if we're trying to match our parents or our parents said, hey, if you don't have this by this, or if you don't get married by this time, if you don't have children by this time, if you don't get a college degree by this time, um, whatever, I'm just using some examples that I think uh, that a lot of people go through. If you don't have a career, you know, making this amount of money by this time. And those are all things in our head that are stressing us out. I really believe it. And we're carrying that around with us. And the truth is, you, those are really a lot of made-up things. Now, I don't want to tell you not to be motivated because I'm all about getting motivated to get done what you want to get done. Turning up the intensity and kicking the ass. But there is a difference between attacking something the right way, hopefully, and the, you know, there's obviously, and then there's the wrong way. And I think a lot of times we go the wrong way because I think from a financial standpoint, we put ourselves in a lot of, mon- a lot of debt very quickly sometimes as we're starting to become adults, especially with, say, college kids. You're getting all this college debt. So you're getting a degree at the same time you're getting in debt. You want to talk about an emotional roller coaster. Plus, then you usually got to get a job because you just need some money and your parents aren't going to help you. Now, if you're very well, if you have parents that are taking care of you, that's different. But a lot of people, I think, their parents are trying to help. So they have the stress of, depending on their parents, the stress of kind of going to school because that's what they wanted. The stress of knowing they're going into debt. The stress of also keeping up with their regular bills. And then getting out of college, having this debt, now finding a job, which I don't feel sorry for anybody because if you make all your own decisions. So if that's the choice you made to go to college, which God bless you, then you deal with it. But then I also see a lot of people, you have a lot of debt there. Then they get married pretty quickly, maybe in their mid-20s maybe. And then all of a sudden, they still have all that. They need a house and then they need a newer car and then they start having all these children, which is fine. Do whatever you got to do you are adding more and more stress because before you know it, you have a loan, uh, probably a mortgage, obviously. You then have student you know, loan debt. You have a lot of car payments. Then all of a sudden you're having children. All these things, why are we doing those things? And are they really what you wanted? Because I don't think a lot of times, and I think kids, or I should say younger people, millennials, are getting smarter. They're not as committed in those things, which I think is a good thing. Like even getting a car um, or getting a used car or being more conscious saying, hey, I'm just going to use Uber and Lyft while I'm at college or get a bicycle or a a Vespa or whatever instead of like having to have a car. Obviously, it depends on what college they go to, weather conditions. But they won't, they, they stay at home with their parents, which I'm ready to kick their ass on that one. But they think things through a little more where I think my generation was all about proving themselves to their parents. And I don't want to say that they were equal, but a lot of us, it was competitive. I think our parents always wanted more for us. And at the same time, we wanted more than our parents had. We were kind of caught in that frame, mind frame, or frame of mind, which is very interesting. But I don't know if that's the case now with millennials. I think they are um, a little smarter with, they enjoy their life, I think, a little more, which I respect from that standpoint. And I think they, like I said, live with their parents more. They kind of lean on their parents a little more. And we kind of baby them a little too much too. But as far as stress goes, let me get back to that. What are you setting your, your, your physical and mental state of mind is what I really should say. What are you doing? Again, you have to become aware that all this stress is something that is usually self-inflicted. And we don't want to acknowledge that. And the same with fit. I'm going to jump on there. If you can lean off stress and start to get more physically fit, I think you'd be shocked at how you feel. Because I had to do that, especially the last 10 years of my life. Because I had a lot of stress with a lot of bills. And I'm not saying I don't have any stress now. But I stopped doing things that stressed me out to the point where the reward was not worth worth it. The payoff is not always there. I'm older now, so I know if I'm going to buy another house, what is the payoff? A lot of times, am I buying another house just to have a house? Is it going to appreciate? Is it going to depreciate? I hit my kids now. It doesn't matter. I don't have to worry about schooling. 
even cars. Why am I going to buy a more expensive car? If I could afford it, I could afford it. If not, not. What kind of car am I really looking for? Am I looking for like a vintage car? Or do I need a, to buy a new car? I'm smart enough to say, well, you're going to lose 40% of the value on that car. All these things I think about now. I'm way more self-aware. But what I am aware of is I realize the more fit I am, the better I feel on a whole. That's really what I like when I was heavier I was like 240 and 250 for like 20 years I felt actually not good at all I call it reverse anorexism no matter how big I got I always felt small now that I'm like finally comfortable in my own skin it took years to say what was I doing I was actually stressing that I was never big enough just carrying that around besides everything else I was working out and it wasn't helping me I was actually working out and it was hurting me which makes absolutely no sense. So maybe from a physical standpoint, people are looking at me like, you're huge, you're strong. I was, I, I was profusely sweating. Uh, I, my arm once went numb. I was getting chest pains. And I think the same thing I can say in, that I was doing while I was working out was the same thing I was doing in my life because I, I was buying homes that were very expensive that I knew I had to keep up with. Again, buying cars, living a certain lifestyle, traveling and all that. And I'm not saying I struggled. But it was a lot and it, it was stressing me out because when things sometimes don't always go your way, which I ended up having a daughter that needed a liver transplant, which changed the whole dynamic of my life, which actually in the long run, which was wonderful because I learned about myself. I'll tell you, you get yourself, you put yourself, your back against the wall, you'll find out truly who you are from a financial position, an emotional, everything. But back to me being fit now. I feel probably better than I've ever felt at 50, which sounds crazy, but I've learned to do workouts that work out for me, that make me feel better in the morning, make me feel better at night, even with the position I put myself in with, say, credit cards I've learned or my rent, not having to, you know, purchase a home again or all these, or having a car that was a very low car payment. All those things just changed my life. And I just had to say, I was the type of guy to say, I am sick of playing by the rules that I always have to, one, compare myself to my friends. I don't care. Some of my friends have big, beautiful homes and family members. Some live in mansions. Some live on lakes. Some have lake homes. Some live in South Florida with uh, penthouse condos. Some live in California. And, you know, I have all these in Chicago. Some live unbelievable lifestyles. And what's funny is a lot of people I know, even tons of people I know wealthy, they always say, Rich, I wish I had your lifestyle <laughs> no, to a certain degree because, and, and I know they say that jokingly, that it's just like a compliment, but I've gotten to the point where I'm just very comfortable wherever I get to travel all over North America uh, doing work, which I like. And uh, sometimes it could be stressful, but you kind of learn how to deal with that stress. But I will say I had to figure out my balance in life, you know. What do they call that? Life, work, balance or whatever the case may be. And it's really simple. I love doing a podcast now. I'll do YouTube videos. I like working out. Um, I like sleeping to a certain time. I love helping people. So I really had to figure out how do you want to help people. I always hear people wanting this, always saying, I'd love to help as many people as I can. I first started with my You Around app, which was a help, which is an app to help people in the time of need. I started with that and started to exhaust me. Plus, I was kind of bored. So I jumped on this YouTube podcast thing that my a lot of people have been telling me I should do for like the last 10 years. Never did it. Let me get some more water. But my true passion was to help people. That's what I wanted to do. I wouldn't mind making a couple more movies, maybe in the future, like a heist cool movie or something cool like that. But I wrote the books I wanted to write, and it was all these things that I believe that were stressing me out. One is I wanted to write a book. I have no idea why. I ended up doing two of them. I wanted to make a movie. I basically did two, and I helped co-produce kind of a third, got that out of my system. Um, I created this program, Mastering Self-Confidence, to help men uh, with their self-confidence, especially when meeting women, did that. It was like all these stresses I had that I had accomplished, and if I didn't, you know, I was rattled this last 10 years again. So if you went 10 years before that, in my mid 20s to mid 30s or late 30s, the stress was constantly keeping up with, you know, a family lifestyle, which I realized I'm really not that interested in to a certain degree. 
I love doing things, but I'm really not the greatest. I can't say I try to be a great father. I'm not. I wasn't the greatest husband's a husband by any means. I'm not a great. I feel really bad sometimes for my girlfriend Rhea because I'm really not the most loving or affectionate person, um, and I know that about myself. But then the last ten years, like I said, then the stress was books and all these other things I need to accomplish, and I finally did those. And now I have finally, and I, it, it's easy for me to talk about. If you have all these stresses that you're carrying with you, that you need to get accomplished, stick with them. Just learn that they're going to take a lot more time usually than you thought. And I think that's part of it. We think in our minds like, oh, I'm going to write a book in a year. Well, each book took me about two and a half years, right? I thought my film would take X amount of years. It took me probably three times the time to do that. I thought I was going to make this Mastering Self-Confidence program. I'd have it all wrapped up in like six months. probably took me a year and a half, two months by the time I got it to where I wanted it. I don't care if it's even creating a website. Sometimes you're like, oh, yeah, I'll knock that out in a week. Two, three months, you know what I mean? So maybe even six months till you really get it exactly the way you want. But have fun while doing it. The stress, it's good that, like I said, stress could be good because it can force you to do certain things, but don't let it destroy you. I think that's that's where the cliff is, where we're, we're stressing, 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 and before you know it, it starts to deteriorate our brain. Now we're not thinking clearly, and now we're desperate. And I think men go through that. I teach in my, my Mastering Self-Confidence program is they're stressing because they don't know how to meet women or they haven't met the right one. Stress, stress, stress. Before you know it, they're not even themselves. I call it death spirit because now you're, you're dying. You're so desperate. You're not even, you know what I mean? And I think a lot of stress makes us desperate. It either it bogs us down and makes us feel like, oh my God, I can't get this accomplished. I'm going to do anything to get it accomplished, which that may not be the right route, or I can't get it and you fail and then you quit or you're, you're stressing that you can't do it and then you just walk away from it, whatever the case may be. Just try to balance that out and again, try to get more fit. I know that I keep going back to that, but I don't think people really realize when they're being in shape is easy in life. I'm telling you, being out of shape is hard, especially as you get older, the more fit you are. That doesn't mean I. you need to be a track star or you've got to run a marathon, decathlon, all these people that you know maybe doing bodybuilding show, powerlifting. I don't care if it's you're not a black belt, all these things. Anything to get you in shape is better than nothing. And I promise you, if you've never been in even decent shape, I think when people think people in shape, they think of a guy sitting there or a woman with a six pack or a woman being very fit with a great ass that can do yoga or a guy that can just run marathons or decathlons or a Navy SEAL. It's not like that. Don't worry about any of that shit. You just got to get into a place physically that you feel better when you wake up or when you go to sleep. It can be anything. It can even be walking, I tell people. But if you can release or relinquish some of that stress and start to feel better physically, whatever that may be. Now, maybe it isn't even working out. Maybe you like jumping out of planes. I don't know what it is. Maybe that will make you feel better. Start doing that is really what I'm trying to say. Start doing things you love to do. That's kind of obvious, but everybody usually will come up with an excuse. I don't have the money. I don't have the time to do what I like to do. I got too much of this or that. Okay, I get it, but you can find time to work out. If you work out an hour a day, it's 4% of your day, right? So don't tell me that, but if, if you're not in shape and you're very stressed, I'm telling you, start just getting, try to lose some weight if you're overweight. If you're too thin and you feel weak, try to build some muscle mass. Take your time, figure it out, but try to build some inner strength and mentally, physically, you're going to start feeling better about yourself. I can almost guarantee you that. I promise you that. Now, if you get obsessed with, like I said, me before where you start working out and you're like, oh my God, I'm not big enough. I'm not big enough. I'm not fast enough. I'm not strong enough. Then you're putting yourself in the stress into another situation. Again, like I said, there's a difference between stressing in a good way, I think, and a bad way. Because the truth is, say you want to run a certain amount, uh, say you're a runner and you want to do a mile in a certain amount of time. If you don't do it, you can keep doing it. If you have a mortgage that's too expensive, you're going to get thrown out of your house with your kids. Two totally different types of stress, right? So let's not, let's not bullshit about this, okay? 
All right, so I'm going to wrap it up there. I didn't mean to get so long-winded. I want to make this a short one, but I do want to make sure people understand that if you are, you need to physically feel good just as much as mentally. It's a combination. It's a one-two punch. Don't, I, I really think a lot of people think finances is going to make them, or financial stuff, getting all these possessions are going to make you happy, which they may. But as time goes on, more and more and more, and you may never have stress financially, but you know, you look at a lot of guys too on the other end that you know, they have great finances physically. A lot of them, I can just see them, especially as they hit 50, 45, 55, 65, they're falling apart. I can just see it. Their hair, their eyes, their waistline, they're just, they can't, they could barely walk to, you know, I go meet my friends, some of them, they could barely meet me at the hotel. They're like sweating profusively or you go to, you go do anything, you know, just any, they're just not in shape. And I know when they wake up, they feel like they're, you know what I mean? They're rocked. It doesn't have to be that way. All right. Take care of yourself because you're the only one who can do it. No one else is going to take care of you. I don't care if your wife, girlfriend, kids, they can cook all the meals you want. No one can make you work out but you. No one can do your push-ups. Don't ever forget that. You have to do everything yourself if you want to get in the shape you want to get into. All right. That's it. Uh, if you get a chance, you could check out my Mastering Self-Confidence program. Uh, if not, don't worry about it. Um, but you can go to my website, richchalenza.com. I got a bunch of stuff on there. I'm on YouTube. Where are we at? Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. You can find some of my stuff as well. I'm going to start doing some more comedic stuff on my podcast. Just haven't gotten around to it. But uh, yeah, if you're traveling, safe travels. And please, even if you don't want to join up for a gym, start walking. If you don't like that, (laughs) find something fun to do locally. I don't care if it's just like a pickup game of basketball. I don't care if you're Italian to go play bocce ball. Maybe play tennis. Even if you go golf, man, get out there, walk. Don't use the cart. Do Try to do something physical. Try to help your body. Remember, you only get one. Take care of it. All right, take care.